Hi friends and welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. I am so glad you are all here today. It just makes me so happy to know my friends are returning. But first of all, before we get to the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my Oliver and we are so glad you are here as well. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, DIY number one. So for this DIY, I took two of these chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree and I tried to sand down some of the words there so it didn't stick up as much. Then I painted them both with Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I did wipe it all down before I painted it. And then once they were all dry, I put some painter's tape on the back to connect them just to make it easier for me to measure out the frame that I made. <clears throat> so I took some five gallon stir sticks and I cut them all, cut them all down. I actually did two sets because I decided that last minute to do the front and the back. Um, and then I went over them with my Waverly antique wax and I just brushed it on and wiped it off and I did this on all of them. Then I went ahead and took my wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue them all around the blackboards just like you see me doing right here. And again, I did this on the front and the back. I just kind of, the reason why I did it on the back was because I wanted to be able to um, use my staple to staple, well not my staple, I wanted to hammer in some uh, like a hanger and all that kind of stuff so I wanted it to be thicker I don't know what I was thinking anyways I added another piece in the middle and then I took some of this cork paper uh, stuff that you get from Dollar Tree and I am just laying it down where I want to place it I'm using my exacto knife here to to cut it out now it did give some rough edges but that was okay because I uh, knew what I wanted to do to cover that. So um, once I had it all cut off, I just pulled apart all the extra there and then I pulled the paper off the back because it's sticky and I laid it down on one side. And then I had painted two of these little boxes from Dollar Tree. I went over them with my antique wax and I had a couple of pieces of my five gallon stir sticks that were cut down and I covered the them with wax as well and I am going to use my wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue those on to my box just like you see right there and yes I did the the antique side on there um, that way if you saw through the hole you would see the antique side so then I'm going to add some more with, uh, wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue these on to my little sign and the reason why I did those little sticks was because of the frame part um, that way this it stuck on both the frame and the cork part then I decided okay I've got this um, home sweet home sign this is not available through Chalk Couture anymore this was a Club Couture uh, transfer of the month and I am going to fuzz it because this is the first time I'm using this. And I laid it down and I'm going to use my white chalk paste. And then I thought, oh, I should have cut this kind of apart so I could do the home sweet home sign side part of it too. So after I got the house all done, I cleaned off my stencil. I washed it and then I cut the home sweet home uh, apart and then lay, I'll lay them. I'll show you that I lay them down and then I'll use my paste on that. Now, if you're not familiar with Chalk Couture, I am a designer. It is a silkscreen adhesive stencil and you use chalk paste on it. Um, I love it. I do have links to my storefront in the description box below if you're interested in, in it at all. Um, there's some great ways to try it out. <clears throat> and excuse me it's early in the morning you guys I haven't even had my coffee yet <laughs> and uh anyways uh just check out my link if you have questions about it you can email me I'm always happy to answer any questions but I love it I, I think it's fun um and yeah so I'm just gonna finish going over the each one of those little stencils and then I'm gonna pull them up and because of my nails, I had a heck of a time getting this one up. 
<laughs> and then I just went and washed those off. You want to wash them with cold water. And then once I was done, I just took some of these hooks and screwed them on the back. And I put three hooks there so that you could like hang keys. Um, when you do use Chuck Couture, you do want to put some kind of a finishing coating over it if you want it to be permanent. I always forget to tell you guys that. Then I decide to go ahead and cover the um, rough edges of that cork with my twine. So I'm just going to hot glue twine all the way around. And then I went ahead and hot glued it around the black side as well. And then I went ahead and did it all around the side of my sign because I didn't want you to see the gap between the frame and the black. So, <laughs> I, but I didn't show that part. So here I just added some ribbon and this bow was sitting next to me. So I just added that bow. Then I added this little hanger and I'm just gonna screw the screws right in, making sure it was all even and centered. And that's all there was for this. I think it came out so nice. I love it. My nephew just moved out of his home or his parents' home. He's on his own. And I thought this might be kind of fun for him to have. He can have a place to hang his keys by his door and put some paper or whatever. He might not want that bow. <laughs> but anyways, you have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below. Okay, guys, I know we're getting close. What? A um, couple weeks away, less than a couple weeks away from my birthday, and I'm still trying to reach my 20,000. So if you would help this girl out, I would truly appreciate it. Share this video, like, comment, and if you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching, make sure you subscribe before you go. I will have a giveaway uh, when I reach my 20,000, whether it's before my birthday or after, I will have that giveaway and um, I will probably do a couple of giveaways. So make sure you are watching and stay tuned. So with all that, let's continue on with the video. Okay, DIY number two. So I took a wood round from Dollar Tree and then this little uh, smaller round from Dollar Tree and I made sure it was center and I traced around it. And then I painted the edges of the big uh, wood round and the black with my Waverly Antique Wax and then the smaller one, the inside of it I did with the wax and then the edge of the smaller one in the home sign I did with the ink. Then I took my wood glue here and I'm gonna put it right around the middle of my big wood round and then I'm going to also use the hot glue again the per the wood glue is for permanent hold the hot glue is for immediate hold I'm going to add this in now I wish I would have uh, made sure it was a little more even there the lines should be going straight across but it's okay so then I took some wood glue and I'm brushing it along the back of my word and then I'm going to also use a little bit of hot glue on the top and the bottom of the word and then I'm going to connect that onto my sign. Okay, and then after that, I took some more of that twine and I'm just going to glue around the black part of that sign. You'll see, I'm just going to go all the way around it and uh, it's just for a finishing touch. I don't know. I, yeah, <laughs> I like using that twine for finishing touches. Um, it's a little rustic and you know me, I love rustic. So then I took some boxwood greenery. I love this boxwood greenery. This comes from Walmart and I'm just going to staple it on with my uh, hot glue, or not hot glue. Oh my goodness. I need my coffee, my stapler there. And then I put some tape on the edge or the edge. See, I haven't had my coffee yet. The end of my twine, and I am going to thread it through those holes and make a hanger with it. And then I'm just going to tie some knots on the back and cut off the ends. And then we have a cute hanger. And that's all there was for this sign. I think it's very pretty. And um, yeah. That's an option. My my nephew came and looked through my stash for stuff to decorate his new place with, and most of it's really girly. So I thought, well, let's make some stuff that's not so girly, and maybe uh, he'll, he'll want some of this too. <laughs> there it is. I really like how that came out. It's just so simple and sweet. You have to let me know what you think as well. Okay, you guys, so it looks like YouTube is cleaning house again, which means they are 
unsubscribing a lot of people. So take a look at your subscriptions. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. All you have to do is click on that subscribe button and it will say subscribed or subscribe. So make sure if it's just subscribe and you know that you have subscribed already, click on that button again to resubscribe. Oh my goodness, that's subscribe how many times? Ah! <laughs> okay, DIY number three. Okay, I'm going to take one of these pie pans from Dollar Tree and this uh, bucket from Dollar Tree. This I've had in my stash for I don't know how many years. So I'm going to paint them all with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And then I decided to go over the, the um, twine there with some of the antique wax and a napkin just because I wanted it to be a little darker. And yeah, so I'm just going to brush over the whole thing with my antique wax. Then... After that, I took my fix-all glue and I'm going to go all around the edge of this pail, bucket, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to add just a few dabs of hot glue, which I don't, I, yeah, it, it really is just to hold it in place while I work on it. That's the only reason why I do that hot glue because it really doesn't stick for very long. So I'm just going to lay it in the center part of the back side of that pie pan. And then I am going to take some of this, um, this is like a, an ivy ribbon kind of a thing. I got it right when I first started my channel from, um, I got it from Amazon and I just, I would never used it until just recently I've been starting to use it and I, I really love the way it looks. So I'm just gonna glue it around the base of that and then I'm gonna glue it up um, at the top coming down and I wanted it to go at a m bigger angle but I, I don't know what I was doing this was my last project of the day and I was tired and I got done with it glued and I'm like wait I didn't really like that so <laughs> that's not what I was having in my head so I just went and made another one here and I'm just going to glue it down kind of the same angle as the first one and then I'm going to take some of those burlap flowers. I got these last year from Dollar Tree. And if you see them, get them <clears throat> there. I love them. They're just amazing. And I'm just going to glue them onto the front of my little riser, candle holder, whatever you want to call it or whatever you want it to be. It could be either. And then that's all there is for this. Super easy. I'm going to spray it with some... Um, spray to keep it uh, the paint on there better uh, but there it is and I think it's very cute you have to let me know what you think about this one in the comment box below okay it is a time for a celebration of your recreations and Marie recreated my uh, barn and the cute little, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of what it, it's great, Marie, you did great. And Don, look at their cute little uh, chairs. And Mar Mary with these adorable bee DIYs. Oh my goodness, you guys, I need to drink some coffee. Okay, if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there. Or you can send them to me, send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger. You ladies did a wonderful job. Okay, so I received this printable heat transfer vinyl from Locklick. Uh, they have an Amazon store. I'll have a link to it so that you can check it out. I'll have some other links in there for you as well. But this uh, heat transfer vinyl, you print your design on it and then uh, use your cutting machine to cut the design out. So we are going to give this a try and see what we think of it. So it comes with instructions here on how to do it. You will need an ink jet printer for it. It looks like uh, you can use a sublimation printer as well. Um, yeah, so first thing we have to do is we have to pick a design. Okay, so you want to put your paper into your printer you want to make sure that you know which side your printer is going needs to be print on. So you want to print on the matte side of this. So for me, I have to have the matte side down. 
because the top part does not get printed on. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, um, and I hope I'm doing it right. So I got that in there and then I'll go back to my laptop and set it to print. Okay, so this is the image I picked out. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit make. And then um, it shows me how to lay it on my mat. So I laid it down on my mat and I hit continue. And then I'm going to hit send to printer. And then I'm going to hit print. Now when you use this paper, and you do not, like on most heat transfer vinyls, you have to mirror it and you lay it upside down. You do not do that with this one. Ask me how I know. I ruined a couple of these sheets because I kept printing on the wrong side. <laughs> So I pulled it off the mat here and I'm just using my little Cricut tool to go around the cutting line just for a, a smoother rip out, I guess you could say. And then I'm just going to remove that top extra piece that I'm not going to need. Then I ironed my shirt and I got it all ready. And then I'm going to remove this part off of that transfer carrier. And then I'm just going to lay it where I want it. And then I'm going to use a Teflon sheet. You want to use a Teflon sheet over it. And then I'm going to use my heat press. I have it set for 300 and it was for, I think, 15 seconds there. And I'm going to pull up and it was perfect. Then I went ahead and picked another uh, image and I laid it on my mat again and I hit make it, uh, send it to printer and printed this one out as well and this is how you put it in your um, Cricut if you have a Cricut I'm going to turn it on and then it's going to scan the whole page so that it knows where to cut and see those little square lines that's what gives it the um, size to cut or it's like the barrier I don't know how to explain it but anyway so it cut it out after that I'm going to remove it just like I did on the last one and then I took this bamboo cutting board from Dollar Tree and I thought okay I'm going to add this on here this might be kind of fun so I added this on to the top and I put my Teflon sheet on it and I set the timer same 315 degrees no 300 degrees 15 seconds and remove the teflon and i noticed it was still kind of coming up on the sides well i should have just put it on for a few seconds i did it for the full 15 seconds again that was my error my bad and it cracked it and i was like oh man dang it and that was my last sheet i didn't have any more because i kept making mistakes with this and it wasn't uh, some of it was the the instructions were not very clear or maybe I just wasn't awake enough. I don't know. But um, anyways, I got it on there. I thought I would just go ahead and go with it. So I took these beads. These are from Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue them in place just like you see them laid out. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the end of each of these little pieces of my flowers, my pick here. And I'm just going to put them in through the holes. And when I laid those little beads down I did make sure the holes were all matching and uh, yeah and I'm just gonna lay these all in I'm not gonna paint the beads I'm keeping everything looking natural and then I'm going to add some tumbling tower blocks on the back again I did not paint them because everything else is not painted it's all natural and I'm just going to use some hot glue to glue them on the back one thing I found when gluing these on the back of an item is stand it up and kind of lean your item backward a little bit so that it kind of gives it a not a straight up and down. It, the blocks hold it a little bit better is what I have found when you do it this way. Um, and you'll see I'm going to just kind of do that again. And there we go. And that's all there was for that. So if you're interested in trying this wonderful printable heat transfer vinyl by Locklick, uh, you can find links to that in my description box there on Amazon. There's a 10%, three 10% discount codes in my description box there. Each can be used once and they're good through April 28th. And if you order them, when you order them through Amazon, there's also a 10% off coupon code on the Amazon page right where you like add to your cart so check them out i i enjoyed it it was a lot of fun and there's my final projects i can't wait to wear my shirt i think it's gonna be really cute 
And then my sign, I don't know, my, my nephew might still like that. I don't know, even with the crack down the middle. <laughs> Anyways, you have to let me know what you think about those in the comment box below. And here's your final reveal. I will be back again on Sunday with the What Would You Make? I love that challenge, and I think a lot of you do as well. So make sure you have those notification bell set. Don't forget to, get to give me that thumbs up and comment and subscribe. We're getting really close, less than uh, 500 away. But yeah, it's going to be a stretch, but hopefully we'll get there. Uh, stay tuned at the end. I have a couple of things for you. And with all that being said, you guys, I really hope you have a blessed rest of your week. I will see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Okay, so I had someone ask me to show a few things in my craft room um, for storage for her to help or to help her with storage. So I'm going to turn the camera around here and let you see. It is still kind of messy, but this is how I have all my chalk couture. It is one of these bars. I got these from Amazon along with these clips. And um, I've got two layers. Now the problem with this one way up there is that I can't reach <laughs> those clips. I have to have my husband come in and um, take them down for me or put them up. Or I have to move my chair and bring a step stool in so but I do love this I love having them all hanging there and it makes it easy especially this row makes it really easy for me to um, find what I need and I have them I'm a little OCD about this but I have them based on the season so this is like everything and anything and then it goes to Valentine's Day spring and Easter summer 4th of July Christmas Thanksgiving Christmas that kind of stuff this is how I store my Sorry, see, there's so much stuff in here. <laughs> this is how I store my uh, chalk paste. I created, I took the crates from Dollar Tree and I just glued them all together so that I had a place to store all of them. And that's uh, right next to me. And then this is how I have a lot of my ribbons. Now, you guys, I tell you all the time, I think I am addicted to ribbons because <laughs> I love them. Um, I... This is fun and it's easy because they're right next to me, but I'm all about convenience, you guys. And uh, this is a little inconvenient because as you can see, they run out and then I have to take, I've got them rubber bands here to keep these from falling off, but these are just pegs that I got from uh, Walmart, these dowels, and then these are just the chains from Dollar Tree. But I had to put rubber bands on the end so that the ch chains don't come off. And so when I change these out, which I just changed these out and I'm already running low, so I'm going to have to change them out again. I removed the rubber band, removed the clips, carefully let them go down and then take them off um, and replace them with new stuff. But that's how I have my ribbon. I have a lot more ribbon, but what I'm doing now is I am actually folding them, taking them off the spools and folding them. And then I've got these things here. I have an extra one that I'm going to be putting them in. Um, and that's how I'll be storing them. So that's what I'm doing as far as, sorry about all the mess, but as far as my ribbons and my chalk couture, which is all up there. I was outside with Oliver. My husband just got the pool open and he's working on getting it open and clean. But I noticed some movement in the water and I look and there's a frog swimming in our pool. And he came to the wall and he acted like he didn't know how to get up and I felt bad for him. So I went and I took my uh, big net and I got him out of the pool and I laid him on the diving board and there's a picture of him. I just had to share. I thought it was so cute. <laughs>